Hello, welcome everyone. We've made King this short video just to tell you a little bit more about how you can manage ticks and not let them um, get in the way of your life. I'm Alice Farrington. I'm a clinical psychologist. And I'm Ioana. I'm uh, an assistant psychologist. And I'm Olivia and I'm an assistant psychologist. So um, we're going to be start with um, talking about managing ticks and uh, there are three main ways. Uh, we, we know that ticks can be upsetting and they can impact on your ability to engage with things that you want to do. So we're going to talk today about different ways of uh, managing ticks. Um, and generally, there are three recognized ways of managing ticks. Um, psychoeducation, uh, which aims to uh, improve our knowledge of ticks and most importantly, to normalize ticks. Uh, this recording is, is a kind of psychoeducation. Um, and for most young people, this is enough to help them manage the impact of the ticks on their daily lives. Um, psychoeducation is the main intervention. Uh, that we offer when young people are having difficulties with the ticks. Uh, and more interve intervention usually isn't needed, um, as long as the practical steps that we discuss here are put in place. Um, habit reversal therapy. Um, this is a kind of therapy which includes finding a competing response which is an action you can do instead of um, a take. Um, and we will talk about this more uh, in a bit. Um, and medication. Uh, well, there's not much research about med medication um, and there can't be complexities um, and side effects. Um, and we will talk about that too a bit, a bit later. Um, practical steps. Um, ticks are heavily influenced by things that happen around you. So here are some practical steps that you can think about uh, to help help manage ticks. Uh, environment, um, being aware of what situations make you tick, make your ticks worse, um, can help you manage manage them. Um, and we can control or change our environments to a certain extent, obviously. Um, so if you think about what changes can be made? Uh, can you remove the trigger if you know what the trigger is that makes you tick? Um, can you find a way to be able to tolerate or ignore the trigger? Or if, if that's not possible, can you remove yourself from the situation? Um, you, you may want to think about what happens before and after a tick and when your ticks occur most often. Um, this can also help towards keeping uh, yourself uh, safe, particularly if the ticks have uh, potential to be harmful. Uh, as you can limit uh, your exposure to possibly dangerous situations and um, ultimately managing the environment can help to decrease uh, the anxiety and increase safety. And uh, of course, it's, it's really important to have good social support. Um, some people like to tell others about the ticks, so they are prepared uh, and may able to help you. Uh, when we talk about social support, we also refer to schools. Um, and some te teachers, unfortunately, don't have knowledge of ticks to be able to support uh, young people with ticks. Uh, we would encourage you to send leaflets uh, and information about ticks to your school uh, to ensure uh, they have understanding about ticks and can, su can support you better. Uh, another very important uh, step is to try not to respond to, to ticks, which I'm sure is uh, much easier to say than, than actually do it. Um, we generally recommend that ticks are not reacted to. Um, and that's because ticks like, like attention, um, making comments about ticks as they happen, um, asking the young person um, not to tick, 
um, laughing about takes, um, even um, comforting the person are all, all forms of attention um, that ticks uh, feed on. Um, anxiety and self-consciousness can can make ticks worse. Um, so by not react by not reacting to the ticks, uh, you reduce the anxiety and and attention to the person uh, who is who is actually experiencing the ticks. Um, of course, we understand that sometimes re reassure, reassurance is needed, um, but what we're trying to do is normalize the ticks and actually see past them. And um, also a good practical step is trying not to suppress them, trying not to hold them in. It can sometimes be harmful. Um, it, sorry, it can sometimes be helpful um, to know how to suppress ticks. For example, if you are in school or if you are in a lesson, um, in in an exam, um, or if you're meeting someone new and you think that uh, you you want to uh, you don't want to tick, um, so uh, all these situations might be situations that you actually want to try not to tick. Um, however, like we said earlier, um, this takes a lot of effort, and uh, what you hopefully find is the energy that you would be using to hold your ticks in um, is instead going into the things that you want to do or want to concentrate on. Uh, and you can also find that you then if you if you don't suppress your ticks, um, then when when you're trying to relax or when you go back home, your ticks won't um, explode, won't be um, much worse. Um, some people benefit from using distraction rather than suppression. For example, using a fiddle toy or doodling um, to address hand twitches during school lessons, um, chewing sweets to manage facial tics, whatever works, um, it, it's, it's very individualized. Um, the take home message from uh, from these uh, suggestions and from these uh, from this discussion about ticks, um, should be to normalize ticks. It's about um, helping you to understand uh, what that the most important um, part about you is not your ticks. So, um, what about when ticks are painful or severe? Um, the majority of individuals with ticks uh, don't require additional treatment once the practical steps that we just mentioned uh, are, in, are in place uh, and they uh, have um, managed their, their environment that the young person um, is in uh, and also when they have good social support um, as, we, as we mentioned. Um, However, for some severe ticks that are very distressing, very harmful in some way, um, the next line of treatment is behavioural therapy and only after that would medication be considered. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about medication. Um, lots of families ask us about medication as a way of kind of controlling or managing ticks. Um, but because the ticks aren't themselves a, a medical illness, there's not been a huge amount of research into, into medication. Um, for a small number of people, uh, there are some medications for other conditions that can reduce ticks, uh, but these aren't designed specifically for ticks. Um, and they do have a risk of, of side effects. Um, so there are some medications that need kind of regular heart screening um, or, or medications with other side effects um, that then sometimes need other medications in order to manage those side effects. Um, and also it's not guaranteed that those medications will work for, for an individual. Um, so unless the ticks are causing a, a significant impairment or significant kind of distress in quite specific situations, um, medication generally isn't advised. 
So we'll move on to, to habit reversal therapy. Um, so this is a behavioural intervention um, which aims to kind of change the behaviour of the tics um, and it can be considered when tics are causing a lot of impact or a lot of pain um, if a young person chooses and, and feels really motivated to learn some tick management skills. So habit reversal therapy works on one tick at a time. We start by making a tick description, uh, which involves thinking in detail about what happens during a specific tick. We then focus on kind of detecting that tick. Um, we also call that awareness training, um, and that improves, uh, it's, it's kind of involves improving your awareness of that urge that you might feel before a tick. And that works with the next step. So the next step is to make a tick blocker. Um, which is called a competing response, um, and that's an action, which means that you can't do your tick. Um, and that's an action that you kind of put in place when you feel that urge to tick, uh, like in the tick detection step. So habit reversal therapy is all about breaking the cycle that you can see on the screen here uh, between the sensation or the urge to tick, the tick itself and the kind of relief that you then get from the urge. Uh, but that means that the competing responses take a lot of practice. So habit reversal therapy also involves um, bits of kind of relaxation um, and also making sure that that social support is in place because those are those are really important parts in managing the ticks. So a competing response has five elements. Um, so when you're thinking about what, what competing response you could do for a tick, um, firstly, it needs to be incompatible with the tick. So that means you can't do the tick while you do this competing response. Secondly, it's less socially noticeable than the tick, which means it's more subtle, it'll be less noticed by other people. The third one is that it must use no props and that you must be able to do the competing response anywhere, which means that you'll be able to kind of put in practice this wherever you are, you don't need a specific thing or to be in a specific place to do it. And then finally, you need to be able to hold the competing response for as long as one minute. Um, so the idea is to hold the competing response until that until that urge starts to pass. So here we've got some examples of different competing responses. Um, so when coming up with a competing response for it to be effective, you need to kind of think about what what body part is involved in the tick. Um, so, for example, kind of the top one, um, if the tick involves kind of moving the head to the left um, in quite a big way, then you can think about maybe maybe holding the head very slightly to the right um, would be would be a competing response for that. Um, and we I like a, a really common tick as well is um, is a lot of young people kind of roll their eyes upwards um, and the competing response for this might be to kind of hold their gaze slightly below eye level, uh, slightly below their, their kind of eye level. Um, so various kind of examples on, on the screen, but you can see that most of them involve involve the kind of the body part that, that does the tick and thinking about what that what that body part can be doing um, that, that isn't the tick while you while you feel that urge. So this is the same um, the same kind of uh, table as we showed before. So um, part of the habit reversal therapy is um, kind of function based interventions, and that kind of really covers these these practical steps in terms of thinking about the environment, the social support, um, the like not getting the responses from from other people, um, and things like distraction as well. So this is just a bit of a reminder. And the next bit um, is relaxation training. Um, so ticks are often made worse by stress and anxiety. And there are various kind of relaxation techniques that you can use, which can can help to reduce the feelings of stress um, and that this can reduce the ticks in some situations as well. So we've got a few examples on the screen here. Um, so I'll talk you through the first one, which is um, starfish breathing. Um, so that's where you you kind of you choose a hand to be your starfish and you hold it out with with your fingers spread because it looks it looks a little bit like a starfish and then you use your pointer finger from the other hand um, to straight to to trace the the starfish as you breathe. So if you start at the bottom of your thumb and as you breathe in, trace up to the top of your thumb. 
do so so that your movement kind of matches your breath and then as you breathe out trace down the inside of your thumb then moving slowly paying attention to your breath so continue to breathe up as you as you go up the finger you breathe in and as you go down the finger you breathe out you can do this uh, for, for all of your five fingers and you can do this a couple of times if you need to there we go so that's kind of how we do the starfish breathing is, is we do we do all five all five fingertips um and then you can kind of rest in between uh in between and kind of notice how you're feeling so i'll quickly go through the next one which is box breathing um so as you can see on the screen uh you kind of think about a, a square in front of you um and this can help to kind of regulate your breathing as you as you follow each side of, of a box so as you kind of you can you can do, again do this with your finger you can trace it on the screen uh breathe in as you trace it up the side of the box hold your breath as you trace along the top of the box and then breathe out as you trace down the side and hold as you trace along the bottom and then you can start again we've also got a mention for progressive muscle relaxations this is about kind of noticing the difference between feeling your muscles being tense and relaxed and you can do this with any part of your with any part of your body um there are all sorts so sometimes we do one where, where you think about imagine a fly has landed on your nose and you can't use your hand to get it off so you've got to scrunch your nose up you count to five and then you release it and you kind of feel the difference um when that muscle relaxes So exposure and response prevention is a slightly different technique from habit reversal therapy, but in that it aims to treat all the ticks at, at once and really it involves resisting the urge to tick. So you get used to identifying the urge to tick, you know when it's coming, but actually you, you don't give in to the tick and you, you hold the urge for longer and longer. And that allows people to find out that nothing bad happens if they don't actually tick and that they do have some control over the tick. And also it, it disrupts that kind of breaks that cycle that keeps ticks going because the urge learns really that it's not going to get its way and that you're going to ignore it when the urge comes that you can tolerate it and and actually people do find that although it takes quite a bit of practice to um, get used to having the urge without complete completing the, the the tick people do find that over time they get to the point where they you know that, that they can ignore those urges and that they don't have to tick but it does take a bit of practice usually people learn to do it by putting off the tick for longer and longer sometimes using kind of a stopwatch and having a bit of a game and seeing how long you can do and whether you can beat the last time that you tried um, not to not to give in to the tick so sometimes people can can do it that way and just gradually build up their their tolerance to having those urges without complete competing the tick. And really you do get to the point where you can kind of ignore those urges to tick. So it's a little bit different from the habit reversal therapy and it, it works well for some people. So we really want you to, you know, give these things a try. And, and just similar to the habit reversal therapy, it, the exposure and response prevention works alongside the, the relaxation as part of it to reduce your actual stress. Um, but also in, if you're doing the relaxation, then you learn, I suppose, ways of coping with those kinds of urges um, by um, reducing your, your stress. And also having support from other people can be very helpful as well when you're trying to do these types of things, because it's hard to do things differently. Um, in a way, it's much easier to keep going with the with the ticks. It's hard to, to make changes and only you can make these changes as well. Um, but, but you do need the support of people around you to do them. The other thing we just wanted to say is that people who have ticks often have other problems at the same time and it can be really helpful to be able to um, identify and address the other difficulties that might might be going on as well. Sometimes people don't notice those other difficulties and they might just see the ticks. That's why we've got this picture here of a kind of showing an iceberg so that the, the bit that people would see is the, the motor ticks. That's when you're having to, to do things with your body uh, or the vocal ticks. That's when you're kind of um, making an, a noise with the ticks. 
um, but they might not notice that underneath the surface there's lots of other things going on that are adding kind of stress particularly. So it is helpful to be able to notice what else is going on and, and seek help and support for those other things. Often the, 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 thing, the other things, once you've got those um, under control, the ticks reduce as well. So other things that you can do to, to help is to, to look at the Tourette's Action website or get involved with their charity. They have um, support groups for young people and for parents as well. And they also have a lot of information for, for teachers as well as for parents and, and young people around ticks. And I know we've already spoken about managing the environment as well and um, you know trying to reduce those triggers and normalising ticks not thinking that it means anything um, is wrong with you. Sometimes ticks just come and go in people's development. And if ticks are bothering you, do have a go at these strategies that we've been talking about. But remember, they take quite a bit of practice. So please don't feel disheartened if they don't work for you the first few times. Um, there's a really nice website called the Leaky Breaks website, which has a lot more information to support people with trying to use these strategies themselves at, at home um, with guided videos and things. So we would re definitely recommend that you have a look at that, that website, the, the Leaky Breaks. And if you are still suffering from severe and painful ticks after you've had a go yourselves at the using the habit reversal therapy or the exposure and response prevention, do contact our team and we'd be very happy to, to talk to you over the phone and see what else we might be able to offer that might help you. Thank you very much for your attention with um, our, our video that we've made here. We really hope it's it's helpful for you moving forward. Thank you. Bye-bye.